Odegaard return date has been revealed to us by Mikel Teta. When do you expect him to return? Having missed out on a couple of games in between Arsenal and Newcastle, Arsenal and Sheffield, Arsenal and Sevilla, Arsenal and Burnley. We now have a very huge update coming in from Mikel Teta on when the skipper of Arsenal is set to return to obviously do exactly what they bought him for. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. We also have something to say about Benjamin White. It's all about the injury update of Benjamin White. He's one of those people that we all know that he is really very important on that side of Arsenal as far as the right back is concerned. And I'm the one who really put a story up coming in from one of the close sources, the fly on the wall of the Arsenal dressing room that Benjamin White is out of the game that Arsenal we are going to play against Burnley. And then afterwards, um, we are going to talk about the red card of Fabio Vieira and what Mikel Arteta has to say about it. Smash the like button, comment and share, and don't forget to subscribe. And keep it this channel because we want to hit 18,000 subscribers. And soon I know we are obviously going to hit this mark. Now, let's start off with Benjamin White, who was obviously thrown out of the Arsenal team because of an injury. Ateta told us that on Friday in training he wasn't comfortable, he didn't look right. Benjamin White won't give you much. He always wants to be on the pitch and always wants to hide anything that is in there. But we highlighted it, we noticed in the last few weeks as well something in there. And we wanted to protect him against Burnley. It was the right call for the physios and the medical department and tomorrow we will assess him and understand what's happening. So. Benjamin White felt discomfortable. That's what the manager is really telling us. That is Mikel Ateta. And I really take it and I give it I give it the respect it deserves because Arsenal have gone ahead to learn <coughs> from their past. The physios of Arsenal made a very big hole onto Julian Timber. You remember that very well? <coughs> Julian Timber got an injury at the 44th minute when they're playing Nottingham Forest. They added four minutes, he played them, and they went to have time. When they reached the dressing room, the physios did a very good assessment that was quick, and the player said, I can obviously go on. He just spent one minute on the field of play, and he went to the ground. Ever since then, he has not kicked a ball for the club of Arsenal, and it's obviously going to take loads and loads and loads of years. Sorry, loads and loads of months for him to return. You know, half of the season for him is over. Yet he would have been one of those players to obviously give Arsenal a lot of dynamism in that back line and in the midfield. That is Julian Timber for you. So, with all what they went ahead to know and the experience they really gained from players getting them back on the field of play, they can never do the same mistake. They can never at any time do the same mistake. That is the side of Arsenal. And they've gone ahead to obviously learn it. Even when Tomias really felt like he's not feeling okay, they took him the field of play. They took him off the field of play when Arsenal was playing severe. You remember that very well. And Zichenko came in through at the beginning of the second half. Uh, for Bukayo Saka, in the game of... RC loans, they obviously put him off. Do you know why? Because he's that one kind of person who they always kept on the field of play a lot, but Ateta just kept him off. And even the game that they played over the weekend when they are 3 1 up against Burnley, when Saka felt like he's not okay, he told the, the physios, I cannot continue. Because they told them that let's not, let's not exaggerate these injuries the more we exaggerate the injuries the more we are really going to cost the club so whenever a player is feeling discomfortable obviously they told him get off the field of play and remember even in the game of Sevilla where Gabriel Jesus scored one and created one away in Spain he felt something in his muscle and obviously told Ateta I cannot continue anymore you know and this is becoming a normal the club of Arsenal and it's coming up after the mess they made with Julian Timber, because if they continue to force all players to go back on the field of play when they're really injured, it will obviously put them in a situation where every player 
will obviously find himself in a position of not really getting to where he deserves to be in as far as fitness levels are really concerned. So they will continue getting more and more injuries. That will be bad news to the side of Arsenal. And if I told you a manager, you wouldn't like to be going through all that. So that's exactly what is reflecting in my mind as far as all that is concerned because Ateta and the board of Arsenal are really trying to not have very many injuries. Why? As the season goes on, they want to be having their entire squad available. Remember last season, Arsenal had a problem when it mattered most. Saliba injured. Um, who else got injured? Um, I think Saliba, Thomas Partey. Uh, who else? Who else got injured? Gabriel Jesus. So, in the final, in the final bend of the season. Arsenal had important injuries, right? So this time around, they want to manage these injuries early enough such that when they obviously reach the final bend of the season, they're having a fully fit squad that can come in through and really set everything going like you would love to have your team available. So if at all Arsenal has its players available in the final bend of the season and that's how things are really moving on in the league, you cannot rule them out to win it because they'll be having a very 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 colossal force that can obviously take them to where they want to be as a team of arsenal so for um, for for the side of arsenal i think they are doing great and it's good to see it that you learn from your mistakes and your past mistakes as it's said that it's only a fool who does the same things expecting different results and Ateta is upping his game and in the due course of upping his game he has obviously put himself in a situation of really getting these players in a first and God has gone ahead to bless him that he really has some good replacements for example he's he's having Tomiyasu who can play as a right back Cedric Sower is also there and Julian Tim out of Ghana to do the needful is also out, but that doesn't really pull him out of this talking point that everyone is talking about right about now. So that's all about Ben White. And I think in this week, a clear assessment will be given to us on how long they believe Ben White will be, will be out for. But not playing him for the game of Burnley, it was a very good precaution. And I think the physios got it right, not forcing the player when he's injured on the field of play. Let's go to Martin Odegaard. You all know that. He last kicked a ball for Arsenal when they are playing... Mm, I think they are playing into the Carabao Cup. He came on and scored a goal and then he went back. But even before that, he had missed out um, on the weekend game against Sheffield because he had picked out an injury in the midweek when they are playing in the Champions League at Sevilla. So they returned from Sevilla and they beat Sheffield, then he missed out on the game of Sheffield, Newcastle, um, Sevilla at Emirates, and the game of Burnley. Close to five games are the ones that Martin Odegaard is going to hate to miss out on, and he is really one of those players that you would want to know what is exactly happening with him. And Mikel Ateta did what we call the due diligence to tell us exactly what is wrong with the player. He told us that I don't know. I'm going to have a meeting now with a medical department to understand everybody's situation. And I think he's going to be back after the international break. But I don't know exactly what the decision is and the communication at the moment. So, Ateta is expecting Martin Odegaard to return after the international break. And he's obviously going to hold a very important meeting with the people at Arsenal, right? And when they come in through, the rest will be history. That is it for the side of Arsenal. So Odegaard is very important, very important player for the club of Arsenal. And his international duty has been cut short. Obviously, he deserves a rest. If at all you know what Odegaard is. And however much he likes to play for his, his, international, for his national team a lot, that is Norway. In the game, they're supposed to win against Scotland, you know to finish third and see to it that they can obviously go into the playoffs. But it really puts them in a very tough situation as a team, especially the Norway side and the 
I'm sorry a little bit, let me try to really figuring out something here. The Norway side and uh, the Arsenal side. But all I want to confirm to you is that nothing is permanent, you know? Nothing is permanent and you can obviously anticipate that lots of things will happen very, very, very soon in between Arsenal and Norway. And if at all is cleared, I don't think he's going to be cleared to play any part into the season into their remaining two games. They're having a friendly and they're also having a they're having a friendly and they also have a game to play against um, Scotland. Sunday 19th, that's when they're going to play against Scotland away and a friendly against Faroe Islands. That's what is going to happen. So it's going to miss out on those games. But I think there is they have nothing to do. Arsenal just has to focus so much on to Odegaard and Odegaard just has to focus so much on Arsenal. They should admit that these qualifications have been really hard for them and they cannot make it to the Euros unless they go to the playoffs and see how they can obviously go there. But all they need to do is that to prepare their team. I've seen some good players that they're having and if the team really gets, gets really together, it can really do a beautiful job. That is it. So... I don't really find it very, 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 very important for him to go ahead and really play for the side of Norway. Ever since he came in at Arsenal, he hasn't rested a lot. So let him rest for a full month because if he doesn't play this coming two weeks until the 25th when Arsenal play out at Brentford, Odegaard will be resting for a full month, meaning that that will obviously see his batteries recharged and will get ready to play into the game of Brentford because Arsenal really having a hectic fixture that is coming in through. Remember, on the 25th of November, they are playing Brentford away and Brentford is a very hard nut to crack. Then, Arsenal will host RC Lons, whereby they need only one point to qualify. If they beat RC Lons, 12 points in the pocket, they move on to the round of 16. And I think Martin Odegaard would love to see to it that Arsenal does that because Arsenal is a colossal force. It's a juggernaut that Ateta is going to hate to obviously build to take them to where they deserve to be. Arsenal hosting Wolverhampton Wanderers on the 2nd of December. Arsenal have to put a lot of attention to Wolverhampton Wanderers because Wolverhampton Wanderers is the team that made Tottenham Hotspur drop more points. You know that very well. Then after that, they play away at Luton Town. It's not an easy place to go. Then they play our Arson Villa 9th December, 12th December PSV, 17th December they're going to play Brighton, 23rd December Arsenal will take on Liverpool at Anfield, then 28th of December Arsenal will host West Ham, another London derby, Fulham will host Arsenal the 31st of December, that is it and how th that's how things are obviously going to come to an end. So. Beautiful stuff in there and you need to take it and love it and take it as it is. So when you look at the games that Arsenal are really having, they can win these games, by the way, apart from the game of Liverpool. Wolves is winnable. Luton Town is winnable. Aston Villa is winnable. Remember, Aston Villa is going to have to go 13 games unbeaten at home. It's always going to be hard. You need a Gabriel Jesus. You need an Odega. That's why those two don't need to go anywhere. They need to keep at Arsenal and really keep themselves fit. Brighton. West Ham, Fulham, six points, six games. If they get 18 points out of those, they'll take their tally to 40. That will be 40. It will be 45, right? So that will be something great for the side of, for the side of Arsenal. And I would love to see them go that far. So that is it coming in from Odegaard. And I'm going to hate to give you my reason as to why I think they should and they should give themselves the best they deserve in this player to reserve him and keep him at the club of Arsenal. He shouldn't be going anywhere to obviously disturb what Arsenal is going to hate to build because they are the pillars, you know. However much Arsenal is going to hit win these previous games, but you saw to it that Arsenal lacked creativity, right? Jesus and Odegaard, you know, that pair is very important for the side of Arsenal because they can manufacture something from nothing. That's what makes them very important. Now, after that, Ateta has gone ahead and reacted to the red card of um, Fabio Vieira. He said, with the red card, yes, 
Thank you for asking me. VAR was right. The referee was right. Really good decision. Really positive for Mikel Arteta to speak about that good decision. So, it shows you how objective the manager of Arsenal is. When VAR goes ahead to do something stupid, he calls them out. And this time round, when they did something great, he said, all right, what you're going to hate to do is really right. And it was the right decision for you to take. And they went ahead to take it on. And guess what happened? It paid off and he was sent off and he's okay with it. And that means Ateta is not a happy man to Fabio Vieira because the red card was reckless and would have gone ahead to be preventable. But at first, at looking at it, I felt like it wasn't. But it was really, really, really nasty for him to raise that boot and it really costed Arsenal a player. But the beauty is they're not having any game to play in the coming in the coming in the coming ma in the coming weeks and you never know what will happen later so let's wait and see how what how that's going to happen in here onto the rokani media football so i call upon your reactions into the comment section below and don't forget to tell me your thoughts about odegaard returning and ben white injury assessment really soon to be revealed and what do you think about Fabio Vieira's red card and Ateta saying it was really right to be given to him don't you think Ateta is obviously going to obviously penalize him for really getting such a stupid red card I sign out for now see you letters peace and love the Muslims Barak Laofikum the Christians may the living to God bless you abundantly I'm out